In 2009, in her fourth year as Executive Director of Skills for Change, Jane Cullingworth rises to speak to the Standing Legislative Committee considering Ontario Bill 139. Rebecca Newton reads portions of her address to the committee. Hello, my name is Jane Cullingworth. I'm the Executive Director at Skills for Change. Skills is a community-based, non-profit organization that has been working with immigrants and refugees for the past 26 years. We serve approximately 13,000 clients a year, providing language training, skills upgrading, and employment support programs. Many of our clients are internationally educated professionals, teachers, medical doctors, engineers, and architects looking to secure employment in a labor market that is often inhospitable. Four years earlier, in a 2005 Toronto Star interview, Jane was quick to commend the federal government for its proposed plan to throw open Canada's doors to new immigrants, but also added a note of caution. There needs to be a commitment to provide appropriate supports to people when they get here. We want to make sure that accountants are in the accounting field, engineers are in the engineering field, but that also takes resources. Often, the programs we wind up delivering are prescribed by government. What is needed now is more flexibility in how we offer programs. Definitely, there needs to be increased resources, but even more important than that is increased flexibility. The job for agencies like Skills for Change isn't helping newcomers learn new skills. Most arrive in Canada already skilled and well-educated. But as Jane mentions, the real challenge is linking immigrants with employers and opening the eyes of business leaders to the talents that newcomers can offer. We need to build that bridge. It doesn't matter how much we help people with their resumes. That's only part of the equation. It's true that Toronto has the best educated taxi drivers who can't get a job in their profession in Canada's largest city. But there's also the issue of all those people who've given up, who've been here for a number of years and who are seriously underemployed. In his 2006 book, author Philippe Legrand speaks about rich countries and their lopsided immigration policies. On page 84, he writes, Jane Cullingworth, the British-born Executive Director of Skills for Change, points to the example of a Pakistani-born professor who could find work in Canada only as a security guard. When he was in Pakistan, the professor had his own security guard. Here's another example of a professional making sacrifices for their kids. Two years earlier, in a London Free Press article entitled Armed with Degrees, They Drive Our Cabs, Jane observed that government pays for food, clothing and lodging for one year for all refugees. The problem is, there's no follow-through. There's a communication gap between governments. Ottawa brings immigrants in, but the provinces regulate labour. Once immigrants are accepted into the country, they are sent on their way without knowing what they need to do before they can get work here. We have a national immigration strategy, but we don't have a national employment strategy to match. In June 2000, Jane joined Skills for Change as the Manager of Programs and Services. In September 2002, she went on to work extensively for PROMPT, a coalition of over 20 immigrant professional and trade associations, community initiatives, and umbrella groups. PROMPT advocated for credible, innovative policy solutions that would create equity within the system. In September 2005, Jane joined Skills for Change as its Executive Director. Jane's tenure as Executive Director was marked by many milestones detailed in the agency's annual reports. In 2005, for example, Jane acknowledged a shift from fully funded government programs to funding from other sources, in particular social entrepreneurship and fee-based services to corporations. Also in 2005, two multi-stakeholder partnerships, Bridge to Success for Trades and Teach in Ontario began. Both are examples of Skills for Change partnerships with regulatory bodies, unions, employers, private trainers and other community organizations. In 2006, the Resource and Development Unit was formed at Skills for Change. Its aim to strengthen our financial infrastructure and broaden our service offerings to employers. And it was also in this year that Skills refreshed their logo and added a new tagline that reflected the agency's mission, vision and philosophy. 
Jane's third year as executive director was also the agency's 25th anniversary and the 15th anniversary of the New Pioneers Awards. And during the same period, the staff at Skills for Change grew by 50%. As an example, four new programs were secured, namely Engineering Your Future, Career Transitions, Enhanced Language Training for Agricultural Specialists, and Newcomer Professionals at Work. Highlights of 2009 included the development of a comprehensive job classification process and a new competitive salary compensation program. The management team grew to include, for the first time, a human resources manager. In addition, two new programs and services managers began their work. Securing additional funding led to the opening of a location in Brampton and a new trades program. During this period, a group of new Pioneer Awards recipients came together, forming the Pioneers for Change alumnus, a group of like-minded individuals working together to help newcomers move forward in their careers and lives. In March 2009, the vision of Skills for Change was officially launched, laying an important cornerstone for the strategic planning that would take place in the following year. In Jane's final year as Skills for Change Executive Director, the development of a five-year strategic plan stands out as a landmark of her leadership. Grounded in the vision, mission, and values of the agency, the strategic plan reflects the input of over 100 stakeholders. In 2010, Skills became an investee of Social Venture Partners of Toronto. They will work with Skills for Change for up to three years, providing financial support as well as the consulting skills of their partner network. And Skills for Change expands from two locations to four with the addition of Employment Ontario services located at the Dufferin Mall and in Flemington Park. Over the years, Jane has made a remarkable contribution to the growth and success of Skills for Change. As Jane has been known to say on more than one occasion, Skills for Change is like Hotel California in the famous Eagles song. You can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. Although Jane may be leaving, the memory of her inspiration and support for newcomers and the work we do here at Skills for Change will never leave us. In a television interview recorded in 2007, Jane spoke passionately about an agency and its staff that live and breathe diversity every single day. At Skills for Change, we really live and breathe diversity. It's very much a part of, of who we are. I would say that our organization is like a microcosm of the world, like li literally. Uh, over 75% of our staff are immigrants or refugees, over 50% are people of color, and over 60% speak English as a, a second language. That diversity equips us to work really effectively with the community, both with immigrants and refugees, but also with employers. We can really champion the idea that diversity at work works because we live it every day. We, we don't, it's not an idea that we have to buy or an economic argument that we have to try and commit to. It's something that we, as I say, it's something we live and breathe. We really, really believe that diversity works.